after the video about my ex-wife, um, I've been getting the question, well, how did you last for uh, 14 years with this girl and uh, married for nine? I had, how did you do it? And uh, <clears throat> it's funny because the reason why I think is, uh, well, I spoke to the reason yesterday. Um, and the reason, the reason is, is a, is a friend of mine. Um, I don't think I've talked about her in the past. Um, her name is Tori and Tori lived next door to me, um, to me and my ex-wife in, uh, in New Jersey. She moved into the house next door when her boyfriend um, and I'm going to change his name for the first time. I'm actually not going to say the person's real name. And that's a personal choice on me. Even though I've had a falling out with this person, I think the dude suffered enough. So, and you'll learn why, uh, if not in this video, in, in, in a video uh, down the road. But I'm going to call him uh, Craig. <clears throat> so Tori and Craig, they move into that, they buy the house next door to us about, in Jan they moved in in July of 02. We, we, bought, we moved in in November of 01. So about seven, eight months after us, they move in. Um, I became friendly with, uh, Craig a couple months later, you know, it was cordial, you know, we talked back and forth, you know, I had, uh, I had met Tori, um, but we weren't hanging out or anything. It wasn't until my ex was pregnant and she couldn't, she wasn't feeling well, she couldn't go out. I walked outside, Craig happened to be there. He's like, Hey, what's up? I'm like, ah, you know, she's pregnant. She's not feeling well. I uh, was going to go to the steakhouse. He goes, oh, you want to go? So I went in. I asked my ex. I'm like, would you, you mind if I go with uh She's like, no, no, go ahead. I don't care. Because she was just going to go to bed anyway. And, um, you know, so I went out with him that night. Um, went to the steakhouse. Turned out we had a lot in common politically. Uh, we saw a lot eye to eye. After that, we went back to his place. Um smoke cigars, watching, uh, just hanging out, and we developed a pretty good friendship, you know, and through that, I became friends with, uh, and it was his girlfriend at the time, and they were never engaged or anything, they were only boyfriend and girlfriend, um, and let me say right off the bat right now, nothing ever happened between myself and Tori, nothing ever close to Nothing close ever came had to happen, and it was never even enough. So if you're thinking that right off, it's it was never like that. Not that type of relationship didn't happen. It was never ever 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 gonna have even an option discussed. There wasn't any tension. There wasn't any of that. So I just want to get that clear and out right off the bat. The thing with Tori and Craig was they were very similar to myself and my ex, whereas Tori came from, even though I didn't come from normalcy, I came from something different than my ex-wife did, um, as did uh, that myself and Tori had very similar upbringings, we'll say. Whereas Craig and my ex-wife had pretty similar upbringings. So, a lot of the issues that I had with my ex-wife, she had the exact same issues with Craig. And me and her, me and Tori bonded over that. And... What it was was, what it became was, 
we were pretty much each other's emotional support for we were dragging each other and we've discussed this and we know this we were dragging each other through these all through these are awful relationships and like you know because you know she come over and she's like you know he you know Craig does this and he does that and his mother's up our ass just like my mother's up was up our ass. it was the same thing and you know Craig was a very successful um, political operative very successful um, he ran major political camp he ran Senate campaigns um, he was chief of staff for for the the House Speaker in New Jersey chief of staff so Craig was not some slouch he's not some dummy um, his family on the other hand would was just a family of narcissistic succubuses just sucking the life out of everyone and everything in their way and he couldn't shake them he has this Irish guilt about you know and his mom has passed so I'm not going to speak ill of her but um that was the major contention in, in their relationship was let me put it to you this way I, I I get a call from her at my Tory calls me and this is the type of relationship we have Tory calls me in my office in Herald Square hysterical like, like in tears she's laughing so hard she's like Craig just had to go to his mom's house because it turns out there was a raccoon living in her couch for three weeks and she didn't know about it <laughs> that's yeah is that type of of backwards disgusting way of living that she was and that was the type of support because we would laugh about this you know, we <sighs> she'd see me like washing the windows and vacuuming and cleaning and doing stuff, and, she, and I'd be like, "Why am I doing?" Every? And that was the type. And then she would come over, and we would just commiserate with each other, and um, we were really like emotional support <laughs> for each other's terrible relationships. And when she finally got fed up and like has said, I got to change my life. I got to get away from this and broke off with Craig and uh, went back down to South Jersey, got her bachelor's and now she's uh, now she's teaching um, and she is a pretty savvy political operative herself. Um, she was really savvy. Um, so, you know, there's, so she's got, and now she's married, she's married to a good guy now, she's got two, two boys, and uh, we still talk, we still talk, uh, not often, but we're still pretty close. Um, so I was talking to her the other day, and, uh, you know, I was updating her what was going on, and, uh, because my ex cut her out because she was on my side and Tori was there thick and thin through a lot of the bullshit with my parents in the you know in the later years with uh, the no con she saw it all like she she knew about it all she saw it all she used to try to talk to my ex-wife about because my ex-wife would talk about how, how much she hated my parents and hated my mom and so you know, I asked her, I'm like, knowing what you know about my ex and knowing what you know about my parents and the whole, like, is it even, how do you, can you even believe that, that my ex is dependent on my parents? She's like, it's unfathomable. She's like, it is, the whole situation is just something, it is unfathomable. 
unfathomable. And I asked her, I'm like, look, man, I'm like, what more could I have done in that relationship? She's like, and she said to me, she goes, Matt, she goes, what couldn't you have done to make her happy? She goes, you were basically the perfect husband to her. You were the perfect husband. You cooked, you cleaned, you bought the clothes, you had a good job, you gave, you took care of the cars, you took care of the outside of the house, you decorated the house, you decorated for the holidays, you put lights up, you did everything, and she was never happy. She was never, ever, ever, ever happy. Ever. Ever. She's just, and she says, she's like, I use your ex-wife as, I bring her up as examples of how not to act, how not to treat your husband, and what a husband should be. You know? I respected that. You know? And that was the type of relationship, you know, me and Tori have. You know? And when she left, and because she, she left, I think, in 06, and then by 07, I was basically done. And, you know, I was out by 08. And once I didn't have that lifeline, it was just me and my ex. And my it was... Uh, it was bad. But <clears throat> there is a funnier... There is a funny story involving Tori. And my mother in all this. Now, if you remember from one of my earlier videos where I talked about trying to go, how many times I had attempted to go no contact with my parents. And the and the conflicts and the fights that arose. And well, one of the one one of the things I had forgotten and I got rem was reminded of when I talked to Tori. Because this has been a running joke between me and Tori for years, for years. So here's here's here we go. Here's the story. One of the attempts to go no contact, where ended up in front of once again, out in public in front of my house. It was me, my mother, and father. So it's me, Drunky the Fuck Clown, and me, Normus, in front of my house, 2003. My daughter's already born. This is after, this is after the fight at my parents' house where my father told Precious, my brother, that he should have died on the slab. And... I don't, rem I can't remember what brought them to the house, like why they were freaking out. But I had, I had caught him in front of the house, and I told him, get the fuck out, get away, give me the keys back to my house right now. And I was demanding the keys, and my father's taking the keys off, and he throws them at the house. And said, you know, we've been nothing but nice to you, we've been nothing nice but nice to your friends. And right there... I had to call him on because it was something that had been bothering, had been gnawing at me. My mother, from the moment she met her, hated Tori. Hated Tori. Gave her the look of death. Probably because my father looked at Tori the same way he looked at my current wife, like, because Tori, I mean, I probably left out, is, is is beautiful. She's a beautiful girl. It was in great shape, pretty girl, you know. So my mother, and I'm not realizing at the time, and I'm real, like, once again, my mother saw her as competition. So when they made this comment, you know, screaming in the in the middle of the of the road, mind you, this is in the middle of a road where there's cars coming down and, you know, it's a side street. It's not a main avenue, but it's in the middle of the road where they're standing, these two, and they're in, they're in their late 50s at this point, having the sign, I'm trying to walk away from them. 
And I thought we've been nothing but good to you and good to your friend. I'm like, good to my friends. I'm like, listen, dude. And I call my mother right out. I'm like, you've never been nasty. To, I'm like, you only been nice to my friends? I'm like, what about them next door? Okay. You've been nothing but nasty to that girl, Tori. And Tori was great when Erin was born. We used to babysit. We could leave her. She was wonderful. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more. And my mother then goes, jumps up, and in that voice that you heard on phone call from narcissistic mother goes, well, what the fuck do you care? Why are you fucking her? Full fist in the middle. And I just start laughing. And I'm like, did you just do a fist pound talking about a 20-year-old girl and your son fucking her? But, and I completely forgot that this happened. I completely forgot this happened in the middle of the street. This 58-year-old, 57, 58 years old woman jumps up accusing me of fucking the neighbor girl. Even my ex-wife thought it was hilarious because my ex-wife knew that there was nothing going on. It just wasn't. It just wasn't. But this is how my mother thinks. This is how the narcissist thinks. The narcissist sees everybody as competition. Include, you know, that's what they do. They see somebody, they size them up. Are you fucking her in the middle of the road? So, that was an amusing uh, story. I can't believe I, I, I forgot about it. <laughs> because me and Tor, like, because they saw the fight. Like, the neighbors saw the fight. Like, Jesus H. Christ. And I'm thinking, like, my ex-wife, again, like, you know, the neighbors saw this go on with these people and you're hanging around with them. Like, everybody in the neighborhood knew about my parents. Everybody knew. Amazing. And I will say this about Tori. If it had not been for Tori being around the way she was in Aaron's early years, I don't know, Aaron would have been so messed up. Because my because my ex-wife just she she took no active part. She came home, she sat on the couch, she ate Tostitos, she watched and then would watch trading spaces and every other home improvement show as she tried to hoard out the rest of the house. It was the most bizarre existence in the world. And Tori was wonderful. Was wonderful to Aaron. Aaron loved Tori. She still does. So, but that, that's pretty much how I survived the, 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 the later years, you know, in, in the relationship. Um, you know, the last five years is basically, you know, I had this emotional um, support where we could laugh at each other's situations and, um, and commiserate. And I truly did like Craig as well. He was a very, very close friend of mine. And he was devastated when, when they broke up. And, you know, I was there for him. I listened to him. You know, I thought he was my, my bud. And, um, you know, to, to summarize what happened there, he was so devastated in a competition. He ended up marrying a girl, knocking up some girl from Brooklyn in and married her you know after or the third day like three months like he knocked her up the first time he he because he, he was in such a, a rush now to get over tory that now he knocks up the first girl marries her and she ruined his life she ruined his life and you know when i went through my divorce he um he stepped over the line and, you know, he 
started telling my ex-wife things that I was telling him in confidence that it happened. And um, I understood why he did it. And it was because his wife is a shit-stirring troublemaker. And that's just what she likes to do. Just one of these people that is just pure, unadulterated evil. And I, there's one person, I, I mean, I can't stand that girl. I can't stand that girl. Because she, because she makes drama for drama's sake. Dramas for drama's sake. And it was, and she took him down the tubes with him. And I understand why he did what he did. And he did it because just so he didn't have to deal with her big mouth and but I can have that in my life. So me not using his real name and keep trying to keep him out of it is like my gift to him, my act of mercy, because I understand why. You know, and through mutual friends at one point he wanted to like, you know, to hang out and like, you know, I'm like, no, dude, I, I can't have you in my life. I can't. Like, I know it. I know it. I know why you did it. You know, I know his mom died after the fact, and I know he loved his mom, but, you know, his mom was old. He doesn't understand his mom was the one of the main reasons why he lost, uh, why he lost Tori. And uh, they had other problems as well, but, um, you know, and his family was riddled with, you know, as I, as I sit back and I analyze what, what he was going through, I mean, he had it bad, and I pity him. But, and this is a guy I respect as well, Craig. I mean, I really like this dude, and I really would have, I really would have, I thought he was uh, my brother, like, you know, I really did. I really thought, uh, and he was, and I understand why he did what he did, but again, I can't, I can't be a party to it. You know, I, I made the decision that I'm, I was going to be cutting people who did this to me out of my life, and that's why I, I, I had to do it. Um, but to answer all the, the, the question of, yeah, how did, how did I make it through? That's how. Um, I kind of did have an emotional support while I was married, thank God. And as far as, uh, I guess you're all looking for an update of uh, what's going on with my uh, my closure video. You know, I still have my closure. Um, I feel great about how it went. Um, I don't have the anger anymore. Um, it's just dissipated. Um, I mean, I do get frustrated. So I'm like, you know, yeah, a lot sucked, but, uh, anger's gone by and large. You know, what's to be, I said everything I wanted to say, got it off my chest and, uh, I feel good about it, you know, and, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see going forward. So I'm going to cut it, cut the video here. Um, again, thanks for watching everybody. Um, thanks for all your feedback and your support. And I will talk to you all again real soon. Uh, Sally Matthews. Uh, take care, everyone. Bye.